Hey guys, uh, how is everybody's review going? Now, if you do hear some noises and scratches in the background, that would be my silly cat running around and making trouble, so uh, please excuse and my apologies for the noises. So again, today uh, we will talk about dysrhythmia. So first, let's take a look at cardiac dysrhythmia, or what is also known as cardiac arrhythmia, right? Or what we call an irregular heartbeat. Now. This can be a group of conditions in which the heartbeat, like I said a while ago, is irregular, which means it can either be too fast or too slow. Now, we all know that a heartbeat that is too fast, which is above usually above 100 beats per minute in adults, is called tachycardia. And a heartbeat that is too low, or too slow, I meant, is, that is below 60 beats per minute, is obviously called bradycardia. Now, understand that many arrhythmias have no symptoms. Okay, now when symptoms are present, they may be... They may include palpitations or feeling kind of a slight pause between heartbeats. Uh, more seriously, there can be lightheadedness, right, shortness of breath, or chest pain. But for the most part, it can usually be asymptomatic. Now, while most arrhythmias are not serious, some are actually predispose can predispose a person to complications such as, uh, let's say, a stroke or heart failure. So. Therefore, as nurses, we need to be mindful of this, okay? Now, even worse, others can result into cardiac arrest, right? Which can be really serious. Now, here's my cat again. <laughs> now, take note that arrhythmias will play a big role in the cardiac section of your NCLEX exam. So, yes, it is important, and you do have to know the basics, okay? Now, first, I'm going to talk about the various types of arrhythmias, and I'm going to simplify this as easily as possible since it can get quite complicated, okay? Now there are four types of arrhythmias, which is which can be simplified in in groups. Okay, there's the extra beats, right? There's the supraventricular, supraventricular tachycardias. Next group would be the ventricular arrhythmias, and lastly would be our Brady arrhythmias. Okay, again, I'm very sorry for all that clicking and clattering in the background, uh, the background noise. That would be my silly energetic cat playing with the wires under my foot. <laughs> now. Let's begin with extra beats. What are extra beats? Now, first, we all know that the heart's pumping action is driven by electrical stimulation within the heart muscle, right? And the heart's electrical system allows it to beat in an organized pattern. Now, these electrical signals in your heart can become blocked, right, or irregular. And this causes a disruption in your heart's normal rhythm. Okay, now, here's where extra beats occur. A premature heartbeat is basically an extra beat between two normal heartbeats, right? And it usually occurs in the ventricles before they had time to fill with blood after a regular heartbeat. Again, I'm sorry for the background noises. Now, extra beats usually include the two premature contractions, which are which are your premature uh, atrial contractions and premature ventricular contractions, or what we what is known as PVCs. Now. After doing a few case studies by asking recent NCLEX takers, you know, what they thought was mostly pre prominent in their NCLEX exam, a few have told me about PVCs or premature ventricular contractions. So I'm going to dig deeper into that, okay? So premature ventricular contractions or PVCs, what are they, all right? Uh, they can also be called PVBs, actually, which means premature ventricular beats. Now, they're basically early contractions that occur, obviously, when the ventricles right, the lower chambers of the heart, contract out of sequence with the, with the normal heart rhythm. And usually they're generally harmless and usually they don't require treatment, right? But it has been known that PVC can cause uh, a more serious arrhythmias in people with heart disease or a history of ventricular tachycardia, which can be very serious, okay? Now, a quite similar question has been asked in an NCLEX exam pertaining to PVC or premature ventricular contractions, right? And the question involved caring for a patient who has sustained an MI or myocardial infraction, right? And the nurse notes that eight PVCs was visible in one minute on the cardiac monitor, okay? Now, the client is receiving an IV infusion of D5W, which is dextrose, and an oxygen level of two liters per minute, okay? Now, the question asks what the nurse's first course of action should be, right? Would it be to first increase the IV infusion rate, right? Second choice would be to notify the physician promptly. Third would be to increase the oxygen concentration. Or would it be, lastly, to administer a prescribed analgesic, right? Now, 
like I mentioned before, PVCs are often a precursor uh, to life-threatening uh, dysrhythmias, right? Including VTAC, or ventricular tachycardia, and VFib, ventricular fibrillation. <clears throat> now, an occasional PVC is not considered dangerous, but if PVCs occur at a rate greater than 5 or 6 per minute, especially in a post-MI client, right, the physician should be notified immediately, okay? So obviously the answer would be to notify the physician as soon as possible because more than more than six PVCs per minute is considered serious and it usually calls for a decrease in ventricular irritability and it's very necessary for the to call the physician because the physician might, let's say, administer medications such as lidocaine, okay? Now, the first choice, which is increasing the IV infusion rate, it's not going to do anything in regards to decreasing the number of PVCs, right? And the other choice, which is increasing the oxygen concentration, um, it could be a possible answer, but it should not be the nurse's first course of action, okay? Rather, the nurse should notify the physician promptly. Now, the third, um, the other choice, which is administering a prescribed analgesic, obviously would not decrease the ventricular irritability or make any impact on the patient's um, condition specifically with the PVC contractions, okay? Now, again, PVCs are very important, so know your PVCs. And uh, this is it for now, guys, okay? I'm trying to make these videos, you know, short and simple. And I will go over more of the various types and groups of arrhythmias in the next few videos, okay? Again, thank you so much for your time. It is deeply, deeply, greatly appreciated. And if you do want to help support me, you know, doing these videos in some, some kind of way, just... Um, please visit allnursingnotes.com, right? There's a review course that's available over there that has helped plenty of uh, NCLEX takers pass their exam. Again, it's at allnursingnotes.com. Uh, you know, take a look at all the, the content available in there. Again, thank you so much, guys. I really, really appreciate your time. Good luck on your exam, and God bless. Bye-bye.